Karen Hart, Executive Director of the Mary Ball Washington Museum and Library. Since 1958, we've been preserving, sharing, and interpreting the history and genealogy of Lancaster County and Virginia's Northern Neck. Our organization is named after George Washington's mother, Mary Ball, who was born in Lancaster and whose family was some of the earliest settlers and leaders of the county. Their story is just one of many that we tell through exciting educational programs, exhibits, and services enjoyed by thousands of visitors every year. I invite you to come explore the people, places, and stories of our community and see how the past has shaped who we are today. Hello, my name is Mike Osteen. I'm the chairman of the library committee at the Mary Ball Washington Museum and Library. And uh, we have a very unique collection of materials in our a research library. People come from all over the country because many have their roots here in the Northern Neck and especially in Lancaster and Northumberland County. Our library is very unique because we have records and uh, things that are not available anywhere else in the country as well as a consolidation of records about the Northern Neck that there's no rival to anywhere else. We have a surname index with over 5,000 3 by 5 cards which are guides to the names of people as they appear in the many volumes that are in our collection. Uh, we'd like to invite everyone who's interested in genealogy and their family history to come, delve into the 350 plus family histories that we have of Northern Neck uh, ancestors and see if they can find one of their own ancestors here in Lancaster County. This lady's work bag is covered with a blue satin orange silk cover with a piece of paper stating that the blue satin was taken from wall of White House when President Theodore Roosevelt modernized that building. The Ascension Letter of May 1903 lists Ann Cropper as the donor. This rare 1792 needlepoint sampler was a handiwork of 12-year-old Florinda Ball, and samplers indicated that the parents were wealthy enough to educate their daughters. Florinda's sampler follows the classic form, the alphabet, the Ten Commandments, and family genealogy including her parents William Ball and Catherine Campbell, who were married in 1772, and siblings William Lee Ball, Cordelia Ball, and Richard Bland. She signed her sampler, stitching her name, age, and the date the sampler was completed, and these small bits of embroidered cloth are sometimes all that remain to testify to the otherwise unrecorded lives of their makers. Hi, I'm Marcia Sitnik. I care for the collections here at the Mary Ball. We're so fortunate to be where we are. We're a small history museum located in an area that is surrounded by historical sites and by a community that has history that dates back to the 1600s. Families here have names you read about in history books. The Washingtons, the Balls, the Lees, Ewells, Tolls, people like that. But our entire community has supported us for over 50 years in giving us their family heirlooms. We have 3,000 objects in our collection and probably 3,000 in our paper collection. These things are so useful for scholars. We have had um, a master student who has done uh, a thesis on Wharton Grove and the camp meetings using our archival documents. Last year, we had a book that was done, Gone to God, based on a diary that's in our collection. We have a gift from Mary Marr. She is a direct descendant of John Augustine Washington, and she has given us these fabulous wedding bands and a locket with George Washington's hair. This George Washington souvenir damask textile was made to commemorate U.S. independence and Washington's election in 1789. It is woven of the finest linen damask with polychrome border and decorative fringe. The body of the scarf has a laurel garland pattern woven down each side, terminating at the corners. The piece reads, The independence of the United States of America declared July 4th, 1776. Washington elected president of the Federal Union March 1789.